so hello everyone today I want to show you this lens uh, that I took out today uh, and I had had uh, for a few months now I I got I got it on a batch of cameras that I bought like two months ago I never tried before so I said today let's take a look at this lens at the time I remember checking on the internet it's not a very expensive lens and then I just check uh, before making the video and uh, that um, new it cost like $150 and, and second hand it should cost uh, even less and then uh, yeah for uh, such an uh, inexpensive lens uh, well the quality is, is good, it's well made uh, uh, well, it has a metal uh, bayonet which is rather rare these days on uh, cheap lenses but okay all people who do photography yeah they care we care about the lens construction and this one is okay but uh, what we care most at the end of the day is um, the optical uh, quality of the lens so I'm going to take some pictures uh, to, to check this quality how to have a point of reference and uh, we're going to compare this lens with uh, the Micronicor, not the Micronicor, the Nikkor 35mm f2 which has a reputation of being a really 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 good lens but on the downside uh, this lens obviously cost uh, almost three times as much as this one, as the Juno. So, is the Juno up for the job? We'll discover it now. So, let's go for the comparisons. Okay, so here for the first comparison we have a, a lens calibration target that I, that I use to, to check uh, at least uh, sharpness, that the focusing is good and yeah, that's pretty much it. So uh, I did uh, the manual focusing uh, of both lenses about around the, the zero here and then uh, yeah, as you can see the zero uh, but lenses, okay, so I forgot to say, this one here is the Jung Nu, and the one on the right is the Nikkor. Uh, just as uh, at a first glance, they look slightly different, but just for just a little, little margin, uh, namely the Nikon being a bit sharper, but uh, yeah, this is uh, almost imperceptible. Uh, then uh, what uh, I saw previously here in both cases here on this writing the, in the corner um, there is some uh, distortion on both lenses so which I think is normal since uh, both lenses are wide open I think uh, uh, maybe uh, but that's just my feeling that the Nikkor is providing a bit more detail um, for example here on the stand we can see more dots than uh, here on this side and then uh, also uh, the stand looks a bit uh, fuzzy here so this is uh, for the first uh, test um, F2 so we move now uh, well, I think we can jump uh, to 2.8 so which I think will be the most frequent setting for this kind of lenses because you you get uh, good quality and still you're able to have a big aperture and quite some nice bokeh and uh, okay so back to it uh, so uh, here we notice something interesting and then is that uh, even if the focusing was done at zero here um, it seems that uh, as if uh, the, um, the Jung Nu is having a, a larger depth of field which is uh, which is nice uh, okay so uh, but still uh, I think uh, this is my feeling 
the the Nikkor is still providing more details. Although um, you can see that the Jungno uh, provides quite good contrast. Then here on the um, on the right in here we see that uh, the Nikkor has uh, still a bit of distortion, not so much, whereas uh, the Jungno has. Uh, quite some uh, then if we jump now immediately to 5.6 uh, so i'm trying to be quick uh, we see that uh, for the nikkor um, the distortion is gone whereas uh, for the jungnu there's still a little bit but uh, not very much then uh, on the center um, they look quite similar uh, even uh, okay let me okay here okay but then again uh, we come here to this point that uh, the Jungno seems to have a larger type of field this might be due to the optical design uh, but um, okay but for me uh, the Nikkor uh, clearly looks sharper and provides more detail than the Jungnu. Um, okay, just one test. Uh, last setting, which is f8. Uh, here, uh, no surprises. Uh, both lenses act really nice. I'd say it's rather difficult to make the difference from both of them, especially quite far away um, but then uh, I'd say just the Nikkor is slightly better but since we're talking about the Jungnu it's not bad at all if you ask me so this is it for the first comparison then uh, we move to the second one which is just a real life picture Okay, so we have here the real life picture and then we have uh, a bit more color than before and then many things at different positions. Uh, this is what's done in my house, in the room. So we have this bottle of beer, we have these toys that belong to my daughter and then I have the calibration target here which I put there intentionally to be able to do the manual, manual focusing as best as possible. Um okay so we go well just a first overview of the picture we can see that uh, as before uh, it seems that the depth field of uh, the Jungnu is slightly larger um, because here we can see that the bear here is quite uh, fuzzy uh, whereas here it looks a bit sharper <laughs> Okay, so if we go to the zone of focusing, which was the small square here, um, I would say uh, the Nikkor looks uh, a bit uh, sharper. Um, I mean, the lines look uh, uh, thinner, uh, and then there are up here on the on the Jungno, they're a bit. Um, yeah, thicker so but the Jungnu has anyway a nice contrast um, the colors are a bit uh, more deep for example here on the red uh, this little guy here uh, okay so on a real life picture uh, for me both lenses look uh, quite okay even similar uh, but then if we move here to the corner uh, not the corner the edge uh, we have here this bottle of beer and then uh, we see that the Jungnu is suffering a lot of aberrations here whereas the bottle uh, with the Nikkor is quite uh, yeah has almost no aberrations uh, okay so uh, I'll move now to 2.8 directly into uh, the bottle of beer so we see still some aberrations with the um, with the Jungnu 
everything else uh, looks quite okay to me the Nikon being still a bit sharper um, but with a smaller depth of field um, so uh, this is certainly due to the optical design okay so uh, we go back to the bottle of beer uh, and then we look at 5.6 uh, on both lenses so and uh, now uh, well i think the aberrations are gone with the jungno probably they disappeared at f4 we jump it uh, directly to 5.6 um, but then, uh, yeah, Jungnu looks a big, a bit darker. So probably just uh, because it's more uh, has more contrast. But it looks nice. Uh, I mean, we're talking about Jungnu. The depth field is quite okay. Uh, so we have we're a bit sharper like everywhere whereas on the Nikkor where more the sharpness is more concentrated about the the zone uh, I mean in, in depth um, where we made the, the focus uh, okay so finally we go to f8 and then we will finish okay so this is it uh, um, we take we go to the bottle was given a nice indication about the detail uh, of the of the butt lenses uh, still um, on the corners uh, the nikkor looks better and around the sun of focusing uh, the nikon looks sharper um, on the other hand, uh, the Jungnu has uh, more contrast, which is nice. And then uh, the depth field of the Jungnu is larger. So uh, at the end, I would say both lenses are really, really good. But I think uh, the applications is not going to be the same because the Nikkor looks more adapted to make uh, some portrait because of the smaller depth field and then uh, the Jungnu has a nice contrast, a larger depth field so I think it will be more general photography okay so that's it for the analysis thanks for watching and see you next time